I think, uh, you know, like with mothers, I think family is some of the deepest karma uh, that we face, you know, like if it, it's like a major event if someone's your mother or your father. So you're going to have like huge amounts of karmic, karmic stuff. Probably like family is going to be some of the most loaded, uh, some of the most loaded karmic stuff. You know, um, so if, if, if your mother is triggering you <coughs> and coming up with triggering voices, one of the things, you know, that I would do is to, um, uh, before meeting your mother, um, you know, like, if you've got, you've got so many associations that your mother triggers you, like you go into fear or it's going to be critical or whatever, one of the things is to sit with feelings before you meet her or to sit with feelings after you meet her. So you get triggered and suddenly all this fear, anxiety, all this stuff comes up. So, you know, I teach, feel the feelings. You know, just sitting with the feelings before and after because there's a finite amount of feelings. So if you just process, if you take every opportunity to like sit with those feelings that your mother brings up, you'll be, rele you'll be releasing um, the deficit, you know. And so she'll trigger you less and less because you have less feelings. Uh, you're feeling, you know, you have a finite amount of feelings you can feel out. So if you feel out all the shameful feelings, the fearful feelings, the guilty feelings, um, every time, you know, if you can practice the observer, so just before you go in, if you can watch like a practice, can you be the observer of your thoughts, can you be the observer of your body, and try and go into the observer state. And then you go in, you go into the room, and then your mother will start talking and saying things, which will be... And you try and maintain that observer as long as you can. And if she triggers you, like she says something, uh, and, you, and you lose the observer state, see if you can go back into the observer. And if you can't go back into the observer, what you do, you, you have your homework for next, next time you see her. Like every time she says that, I lose the being in the observer and I get pulled into my limited ego. So okay, so then you're doing your practice. So, you know, you can have a photo of your mother and practice and, that, or, and then practice being the observer of that photo and not getting lost and hooked into the photo. Or um, if she says, oh, you know, you've had it, you're useless, then you can just say, well, you just pretend to hear, visualize your mother saying you're useless and then practice being in the observer until you can hold that. So in that way, you're transcending that hook and then next time, go, in, go back and see your mother and she'll probably say you're useless again and see if you get pulled in or you can stay in the observer. Um, if uh, or whatever, she, um, whatever unhooks you, your, your spiritual homework before you go back and see her is to do spiritual work. Like I place, I place my mother's criticism that I'm useless into God's infinite light and love and I pray for a miracle. Uh, I, I cancel my belief that my mother saying I'm, I'm useless is meaningful. I'm an infinite being, subject only to what I hold in mind. So, so you're, you're just making that thing that she says to you meaningless, or you're placing it into God's infinite life, praying for a miracle to see it differently, practice being in the observer of it, or just picture your mother saying you're useless, and then you get these feelings come up and fill those feelings out until they pass. So you're doing, your, you're doing your spiritual homework for transcendence. Then next week you go and see your mother again, and you're just waiting for her to say you're useless again, and then see if, you, if it triggers you. And if it doesn't trigger you, you stay in a, in a resourceful spiritual state. If it does, but then she'll say something else, you know, and then if she says something else and you lose your spiritual state, that's your spiritual homework for next week, you see. So it took me about five years, and the, and, you know, <clears throat> For me, the, the Course in Miracles is a course in enlightenment, you know, it's like to make everything meaningless. You know, like the table is equally as meaningless as the, as the donut, which is equally as meaningless as my mother. It says that in the Course in Miracles. It doesn't say like the table is meaningless, but your mother is special. It doesn't say that. So, or it doesn't say that, uh, so everything needs to be rendered, especially special relationships, need to be rendered meaningless. Because then you get to the divine love, and you get to a love which can't be unhooked out. It's only when I have a special projection, and how could you not be special to me, then you can get hooked out. So you're just taking up, 
So I, with my mother, I want to transcend it. There's nothing she can do, nothing she can say, no string of words she can use, no facial expression. Um, mother, mother is, is a loaded word. Mother is a loaded word. She's not my mother. Like, render that meaningless. Uh, expectations and outcomes, render all outcomes that she should behave, treat me in a certain way. That's also mean, meaningless. Um, because my mother shouldn't be, I know this sounds odd, but my, you know, like, when I'm, if a tramp says to me, you're, you're useless, it won't affect me. But if your mother says you're useless, what does that affect you? Because a tramp is meaningless to me. What a tramp thinks, of, when a tr what a tramp says to me, I'll say, well, it's on your tramp, I'll make it meaningless. But if my mother says that, then suddenly I'm triggered for the whole week. So that's because I made, that's all the meaning, you know. It's also the same thing, you know. I found that, you know, when I went to, when I started my spiritual work, I go to these 12-step groups for food. And like certain people would have certain behaviours that would trigger me. I go, oh no, she's like twitching her fingers the whole meeting every time I go in. So I just go to the observer of that or make it meaning, meaningless or cancel my belief that that's important. And then I found like every meeting was blissful and nothing was happening. You know, so it's not actually every meet, every, everywhere you go is like a beautiful place. And the only things that unhook you is the things that people say or do which are meaningful to your ego. Otherwise, you know, like, you know, like in a spiritual group, like one person may say like it was such a peaceful, blissful group. The other person will say it was like, thank you, will say it's an awful place, you know, like there was, you know, there was lots of noise or whatever. But that's because one person is picking up lots of meaningful things and the other is like, nothing was me. You know, when time is meaningless, time doesn't exist, okay? When location is meaningless, location. If the past is meaningless, the past no longer exists. So th that's like a, that's like gold dust. You can, you cannot, you don't, can only experience what is important to the ego. Otherwise, you're in the timeless now. You're in the holy instant. There's just oneness. There's just oneness, bliss, and timeless peace in every moment. And that's broken as soon as the ego has something meaningful to register. So that's the thing. I'm, I admit, though, mothers can be a lot of work. Mm -hmm. But I do admit that. Uh, but I'm, I want to transcend everything. I want to take out. You know, the funny thing is, when you make something meaningless, the relationship becomes better. That's the paradox. You think if I've got a special relationship, it would be a better relationship. When I, make, when I have meaningless relationships, I have much more fun and much more happy and joyful. You know, oh, you're supposed to be my best friend, you're supposed to treat me specially. Usually it's a worse relationship. So, yeah, but, but family.